Hey everybody, Mike here. In today's video, we're gonna talk a little bit about VMware HCX, also known as Hybrid Connect. We're gonna discuss what it is, what are some of the reasons you might wanna look at it, and all of that. Now, we're not gonna be implementing it in today's video because I wanted to first help you figure out, does it even make sense for you? Does it make sense for your customers? Whatever the case may be. So we're gonna spend a lot of time today on the whiteboard. Now that said, let's jump right into it and start talking about it. So let's say in our case, let's say you have a, a data center, maybe you have one in Atlanta, and maybe you have another one in Miami. And inside of those data centers, you have some vSphere hosts. So we'll say we have one here, and we have one over here. And what do we have on top of vSphere hosts? If you are on this channel and you don't know what sits on top of vSphere hosts, then we have a problem. In this case, it's going to be virtual machines. And in this case, we have a red one there. We have an orange one on that side. All right. Now, HCX is ultimately a migration tool. It comes bundled with NSX, and its whole purpose is really to make migrations easier, to give you more flexibility with those migrations, and to make the network part of it as seamless as possible. So let's start with that network part. Now, in this case, let's say I told you, you know, I said, hey, I would like you to migrate this orange VM over here to Miami. Now you can do that within vCenter. You can do a, a vMotion, whether it's within a vCenter or even across vCenters. You can do a cross vCenter migration as well. That's possible right now without HCX. So why would we want HCX? Well, the problem is when that VM lands over here, what's its IP address? It can't be on the network it was just on because we haven't stretched that network. So it will have to be re-IP. Now in this case, what HCX could do is say, you know, this orange VM is on this network right here, this green network, which exists in Atlanta, but I wanna extend it with HCX. So I'm gonna extend it over here. And now when I do that vMotion, that VM exists over here now, and it's connected to the same network it was on before essentially. So I didn't have to re-IP it. It allowed me the flexibility to move that VM over, maintain the IP addressing, and the cool thing about HCX, anytime you do a migration too, you can always do a reverse migration. So if you moved it over there, you realized, hey, you know, that did not go well. We need to pull it back. It's very easy to do that. Now, I do want to mention before we move on, in this case, you know, I put Miami here, right? But we could erase that and we could say this is uh, VMC on AWS or Azure VMware Solutions, AVS. If you're not familiar with those, those are basically services on Microsoft and Amazon's hardware, respectively, that run vSphere and vCenter and vSAN as well. So essentially you're getting a VMware environment in the public cloud when you use those services. And those actually come with HCX as well as NSX. So that's something important to know is that you know this target could be another data center, but it could also be the public cloud. So it can be used as a tool to migrate to the public cloud. Now let's clear the screen a bit and let's start talking about something else that's really cool with HCX, which is called OSAM, also known as OS Assisted Migration. Now this is specifically useful. Let's say you have some KVM hosts, maybe you have Hyper-V. And on top of those, what do you have? Yes, if you said virtual machine essentially, you know, we might call it something different, but we'll say a virtual machine, right? Just so we understand what we're talking about. We have an operating system sitting on top of Hyper-V and KVM in the form of a virtual machine or what we're familiar with as a virtual machine. Now, obviously we're a lot cooler at this, this destination. So we're running vSphere over here. And in fact, I'm gonna say this is the, the cooler environment. All right, so we're, we have this modern environment running vSphere and then we have Hyper-V and KVM over there. Now let's say we wanted to migrate off of those onto vSphere. Without HCX, that, that's not really very clear cut to do. I, I, off the top of my head, I'd basically be recreating things inside of vCenter and then just kind of you know shifting over application files. Now, I don't even wanna think about that, that sounds messy. Now with HCX, what we can do is it can kind of function, oops, not NSX, HCX, all right? What it can do is it can essentially install what's called a Sentinel agent, Sentinel, there we go, agent, that's really sloppy, on top of those virtual machines within the Hyper-V environment, for example. And that allows HCX to copy all those files and then create a new VM in vSphere that it completely matches the source VM in Hyper-V. So what it essentially does is it takes the source files, copies those over, creates a new VM, and then 
essentially at that point does a switch over. So it brings up the new VM, shuts down the old one in Hyper-V. Now, if we ever have problems, we can always shut down the new VM and bring up the old one in Hyper-V again. But what's really cool is that I've actually done this migration from Hyper-V to vSphere. I missed one ping. I set up a continuous ping on that source environment, on the source VM, and the switchover was seconds. It was very, very quick. Uh, so that's really cool. So that's one use case is being able to migrate from other hypervisors to vSphere. And then the last thing I wanna talk about is just general kind of optimizations on the migration front. Why would I use HCX, right? So you're telling me, Mike, it, it can be good to move from Hyper-V or KVM. Well, I don't have one of those because I'm super cool. Um, I don't have two locations maybe. I'm not really worried about that. Or maybe I do have two locations, but you know, stretching networks isn't something I'm super concerned with. Well, there's other things inside of HCX that can help from a migration standpoint, specifically around scheduling and the way that these migrations are done. So let's say again, let's say we have some VMs and we wanna migrate all of these to this site in, you know, we'll just say Los Angeles, right? And this maybe this is, uh, you know, Vegas, Las Vegas. All right, we wanna migrate all of these. Now with a typical vMotion, it's serial, meaning if you tell it to, you know, vMotion these VMs, it's gonna go, I'm gonna vMotion this VM and I'm gonna wait for that one to complete. Okay, that's complete. Well, let's go ahead and migrate the second one. I'm gonna wait for that to complete. You get the picture. Now it does the third one, right? So it's serial, it's one after another. Now with HCX, what it can do is it can actually do essentially a bulk vMotion where we say, let's vMotion all of these at the same time. So that's really cool because now we can migrate quicker and on top of that, we can schedule cutover. So we can say, migrate everything, but you know what, don't cut over and, and actually flip over to the you know, new site until you know, Saturday at 10 p.m. In addition to that, we could actually even do something called consistency groups, where we can group VMs that should stay together. Maybe you know, I have an, a web app and DB tier of one application and I do not want those to be at separate sites. Consistency group, migrate together. So that's really cool as well. All right, so that's all I really have for you. There's a lot to HCX and I definitely will be showing you guys a demo but I just wanted to talk about what it is and all of that. Now, there are some intricacies around NSX. It does have to come bundled with NSX. You buy it with NSX. NSX is technically a requirement for HCX at the target site. So just some things to keep in mind as you kind of explore this as an option. Like I said, there's some intricacies that I couldn't fit into this short of a video, but hopefully you have a good idea, at least now, what is HCX and why I might be interested in using it. So that said, I hope everyone's staying safe and healthy. Until next time, stay nerdy.